Chick-fil-A Dog Bowl. It's Kaylee Mansell with John Stinchcomb, the former UJ offensive lineman, and I would like to say the star of Monday's episode of Dog Nation mm, Daily. Mm, thank you. And look, I've been seeing a lot of that tonight. I feel like every time I see you, you're chatting it up with someone. Someone's excited to see you. What's it like being surrounded by former teammates and uh, getting to see them in the first time in the wild? Well, it's fun. It's fun to be here. It's a great event. Obviously, Coach Rick, what he stands for and the cause brings everyone out. But when you get a chance to catch up with some old teammates, yeah. some fans that, that you've known over the years, and then see the team having a good time, it's, it's fun for everybody. And speaking of Coach Rick, when you think back to your time playing for him, what's your favorite Coach Rick memory that comes to mind? Uh, winning. <laughs> <laughs> You no, know, it was. Uh, there were some rough years, and especially in the transition, it's not always fun when yeah. you get a new coach. But uh, obviously, the hobnail boot game in Tennessee was a, a special memory. Uh, we had a, a big win in the SEC championship against Arkansas, and then the Sugar Bowl win uh, against Florida State. There were some great memories uh, just along the way that. He was instrumental in being a part of. Okay, so apart from the hobnail boot game, because obviously everything after that comes in second place, when you look back on your time, what's the memory that stands out, whether it happening on the field or off the field? Holly, wow, that's a big question. What happened in the University of Georgia? Uh, <laughs> it was an awesome experience, first and foremost. I think uh, you know, scoring a touchdown against Auburn in a game that we needed to win to make it to the SEC championship, probably near and dear to my heart. What's funny is... My brother still gives me a hard time about it because you know, David Green's my roommate. He's the quarterback. He ends up fumbling into the end zone. I don't block the defensive end because it's a draw, and I'm going to block the safety. So I don't end up blocking anyone on the play. And he's like, you didn't block anybody. You just fell on a ball. I don't know why that's great. So it, he loves to give me a hard time. I imagine that's one of those topics that somehow comes up at like family Thanksgiving every year. <laughs> so you can embarrass you for the whole family. All right, let's talk some dogs. I usually don't get to talk to you about these sorts of things. So it's cool to be able to sit down with you. One thing that we've been talking about is since the Texas game was Kirby Smart's 100th win, where does that game rank on all of Kirby's 100 wins for you? Holly, it's incredible. What? When you play at the level that Georgia has played in the tenure of, of Coach Smart, they played in so many big games. And this past Saturday ranks as one of the best regular season games. It makes me think of you know, the, the environment at home in Stanford, uh, uh, or Sanford State, wow. Forgive me, dog fans. Uh, <laughs> I did that the other day too, if that makes you feel any brutal. better. Uh, I know, I know the difference. Uh, but against Tennessee, that was an awesome environment. But to go on the road mm. and win the way they did in a hostile environment against the number one ranked team, you know, it's a top five regular season win for them. Because they played in so many big games, I don't know where that stands against. You know, it's along the same lines as the game against uh, Notre Dame, yep. another regular season fun one for all the fans. Uh, but the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma is pretty high up there. A couple of national championship games rank pretty high on the list as well. I think that game solidified a lot of things for Dogs fans because this season has been filled with plenty of highs and lows from the preseason hype to the game at Kentucky. How did the win at Texas change your perception on this Dogs team? Well, I think it, it, it surrounds around the defense, right? I yeah. think you see the, the number of healthy bodies having a healthy Warren Brinson and Micah Williams and Jalen Walker in compliment of Stackhouse and Chambliss and Kristen Miller. I mean, there were some guys that really took their game to the next level. And what had been a little bit of a concern, you look, you look at the previous week against Mississippi State, and you're going, oh, I don't know, there's some holes in that secondary possibly. But you know, the number of turnovers they create, the sacks, well, we haven't seen sack numbers like that in quite some time, and then tackles for loss. I think it was surrounded that defense, and now, you know, now you look at the other side of the ball and say, can we consistently uh, build on the sparks and little scenes that they've created offensively to, to be that complete team that we think they're capable of? You can't talk about the defensive performance in the sacks without talking about Jalen Walker ah. and what he was able to do in that game. Is this a guy that can thrive at the next level? And what did that game do for him in terms of getting his name out to not just Georgia fans, but everyone? Uh, I, I think he continues to exemplify why he's getting the national attention that he is. When Micah Parsons and J.J. Watt are tweeting you or 
hitting you up on X. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how the right phrase is. We still call it Twitter. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. On Twitter, then, <laughs> then it shows. I, I think he's very similar to Micah Parsons, mm -hmm. a guy that can play off the ball linebacker, but is a demon when he's rushing the passer. The two tackles uh, for Texas are no slouches. I mean, the left tackle for Texas is a prospective first-round draft pick, mm -hmm. and he consistently was able to provide that pressure that he's shown us all season long. You combine that with the the man that he is. I mean, you, I, I've had the opportunity to sit with him for 20 minutes at a networking event, and you think – there's something special about him. You, you like him. He's He represents everything that you should and would hope for from a player. And then when he performs the way he does mm -hmm. on Saturdays, you think, man, I'm glad he's wearing red and black. All right, last thing. Now the, the Texas chapter has closed, and it's on to the next. It's never too early to start talking about Florida. From your perspective and your time as a player, how much does that rivalry truly mean, and what do you expect from this game? Well, it, uh, the rivalry has changed because yeah. back, back in my day, back in my day, <laughs> we uh, we didn't beat them. So that was it. Still remains my biggest rival really? to this day. Mm -hmm. With that said, these guys don't know any of that. They know a, an inferior opponent from the East. Well, that dynamic has changed, obviously. And you look at Coach Napier and you say, what a tough slate that he had heading into the season. Uh, so they're, they're kind of like the, the dog backed into a corner trying to scratch and do what they can. But the, the, the dynamics of the Georgia-Florida game have certainly changed from the, the 20 years that it's been from when it was you know, Coach Spurrier and, and the, the battles that we saw and what they've become now. Look, I've kept you for a while. I think I hear people in the background chanting your name. You're a man of the people, and they want you back. Thanks for sitting with me. I enjoyed it. I'm a man of the people. A I man of the people. That. You heard it here first. Does it get any better than this right now? So uh, this is my great friend, uh, like a lot of friends in 2024. I see him in person like twice a year, it seems like. But when I do, I'm always glad to uh, do it, even though it makes me feel short. Uh, John, uh, we obviously I know what Coach Rick means to you, and I know all he's got to do is ask, and you're out there and being a part of an event like this. What does it mean to you to support him and support a great cause tonight? Well, it's a no-brainer. It's so easy because, one, you get to support a coach that stands for so much more than just the game, but also it's a great cause, and you can help support all those that are uh, willing to come out and financially donate and get behind a great cause. I think it's absolutely right. And as we were talking to Mike about a moment ago, I also love the fact that it's fun. You know, I love the fact that Georgia football just beat the number one team in the country last week, and everybody's happy about that. But it's also all smiles all throughout here. You know, it's one of those things where you can look around and you can see everybody really having a good time. We're going to have a special treat here in a moment that um, it's just sort of it's sort of symbolic of, of the night it is. Like, I love the fact that not only are people here to support Coach Rick and help raise money, but the fact that you can look around and see all of the happiness that exists here, that's such a, I guess, a life-affirming thing in many ways. Yeah, it is. And I, I'm sure the fans would have been here whether win or lose on Saturday, but boy, does it make it so much better when they win. And you know, there's a reason for all these smiling faces, and it's not because of all the strikes. It's because uh, you get to combine great things, being a Georgia Bulldog for a great cause. So in a couple of minutes, the Georgia team itself is going to make its way out here. I understand that Coach Rick is actually meeting with them at this moment. And uh, I, I love the fact that the Georgia players get into this so much. Now, the truth is uh, they love bowling, so that's fun for them. But I think they also like the idea of getting a chance to relax a little bit, and they deserve that. Y'all, it's such a long season. As a player yourself, you can speak to that so well. Such a long season. To be able to have a night where it's just about fun, it's about being relaxed, it's about using the, 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 the fame and the attention they get for a great cause, I love their spirit in all of this. Yeah, based on last year, you came and they were having as good, if not a better time than most of the patrons that paid to be here. So, you know, one, they get to play games. They're big kids anyway, as we all know. And two, it's a, it's a fun time to come out and relax a little bit. I believe they're about to make their way out here. John, best of luck tonight. Thanks for being with us. I appreciate it, B.A. Great stuff from John Stinchcomb.